Let's begin by interpreting the problem statement. Glycerin is flowing. The pressure gradient is specified. We're looking for the velocity and shear stress, so there's our goals. Velocity and shear stress. And the spacing B is 5 centimeters, and we're looking for the velocity and shear stress 12 mm from the walls. So this spacing here is 5 millimeters and we're looking for the values of velocity and shear stress approximately um, halfway up to center line. So that's where we're looking for our goals. And the velocity distribution is specified here. I ask three questions. Number one, what is glycerin? Number two, is what does pressure gradient mean? And number three, what is this equation really telling us? I'm going to show you how to answer this first question on your own. Go to Google, type in define glycerin, Look for the one that looks like web definitions. Click on more information. So I printed the page from Google and highlighted some key information. So the web tells me that glycerin is a sweet syrupy alcohol. It's a viscous liquid. Here's a real nice definition. A clear, sweet, syrupy liquid from animal fats and vegetable oils. It's used in cakes, pastry, icing mixtures. I also learned from the internet that I can buy glycerin at my local pharmacy. So I bought some glycerin. Here's what it looks like. It says that this is a skin protectorant. So I see that this is 99.5% glycerin and it's used to protect skin. So I can put some drops out on my paper. Oh, and I can observe it's a very viscous liquid and I can get in there and play with this with a pen. Oh, very viscous indeed. I can touch this. Kind of like oil. Very thick fluid. What does pressure gradient mean? Question number two. Pressure gradient means change in pressure divided by change in dis distance. In particular, the pressure here will be larger than the pressure right here. And if this distance is one meter, for this example, the pressure here will be 1.6 kilopascals higher than the pressure here. Change in pressure of 1.6 kilopascals for a distance of one meter. The reason the pressure is higher here is that as the fluid flows down the pipe there's a frictional force associated with shear stress and the net force due to pressure is needed to balance against this shear force. What does this equation mean? Question number three. Because of the y squared term here this is just the equation for a parabola as shown in the problem sketch. And notice in here, if you put in a value of y equals zero here and here, you'll get a value of velocity equals zero corresponding to the no slip condition here. If you put in a value of y equals b, you'll get a value of zero corresponding to the no slip condition here. And similarly, the maximum velocity is right at the center line of the flow passage. Next, I document the problem. I notice that I made a mistake while interpreting the problem statement. In particular, the problem statement asked me to find my goals at both y equals 12 millimeters and at the wall. So I correct this during my documentation. Goal one is velocity, but I'm given an equation for velocity, so I can just plug numbers into this equation. So that's easy to, to, to do. Goal two is shear stress. So I think, can I just apply 
the shear stress equation. So here's the shear stress equation. Shear stress is viscosity times velocity gradient. There's my goal. I can look up a value of viscosity of glycerin and I can take the known velocity equation and differentiate it. So this should be easy to find. Next, I looked up the viscosity of glycerin and added this data to my documentation. Then I laid out my plan, calculate this velocity, calculate the velocity gradient, and then calculate the shear stress. Next, I did my calcs. The velocity at y equals 12 millimeters is 0 0.6 meters per second. The velocity at the wall is zero, which I expect because of the no slip condition. Let me show you how to do the velocity gradient. First, I substitute for u of y to get this expression. Then I recognize that these variables are all constant. They don't vary with y, so they can come out of the derivative. Here's my new expression. The derivative of by with respect to y, this term is b, and the derivative of y squared with respect to y is 2y. Let me clean up my expression. Here's the final result for the velocity gradient. So I substitute for the velocity gradient and get an expression for the shear stress. When y equals 12 millimeters, I substitute numbers in and get 20.8 pascals for the shear stress. When y equals zero, this term goes to zero. And then putting numbers in, I get a shear stress of 40 pascals at y equals zero. Let's review the solution. The fluid velocity was slow. This was expected because glycerin is a very viscous fluid. The shear stress at the wall, which was 40 pascals, was greater than the shear stress at 12 millimeters, which was 20.8 pascals. And this was expected because the velocity gradient at the wall is greater than the velocity gradient midway in the pipe. When we solve textbook problems with the viscosity equation, there are two types of problems. Type 1. Two of the three variables are given in this equation and we solve for the third. Type 2, the problem involves a Couette flow and we use this expression along with other equations to solve the problem. Two tricks of the trade. Number one, consistently use units and dimensions. For example, when I did this problem, I checked that the given equation for u of y was dimensionally homogeneous, and indeed it was. Tip two, connect new knowledge to your everyday world. I gave you an example of this using glycerin. Thank you. I hope you have found this example useful.